Hey everybody, so apparently solar last year accounted for something like 5% of world energy production and of course it's growing. And when we look at it, well we probably think of it in certain terms and it's usually thought of as quite technological but actually when you look at these smaller to mid-range solar farms they are in fact just fixed frames with the solar cells bolted onto them and that's really weird because without solar tracking they're losing somewhere between 15 and 30 percent of the energy that they could produce. The chances are the reason solar tracking is not used in these kind of farms will be well money. And although there are some brilliant solutions from people like Helio Drive using phase change materials and folks like Sunfolding with their T29 bellows driven system and then Next Tracker with their integrated system to optimize each row using motor drives, the fact remains if they're not cheap enough they're gonna, not going to get used. Now they're claiming between sort of 6 and 15 percent improvement but if the cost is more than 6 or 15 percent then it's much cheaper and much easier just to stick in some more solar panels and that's what folks are doing. There are some awesome demonstrations of sort of model size, demonstration size systems like Nighthawk in like solar tracker where the solar cells are used to directly drive the motors or the world's simplest solar tracker where a motor is wired to two solar cells in opposition so it drives left and right and seeks the sun or even clockwork designs that just rely on the fact that that's the time of the day every day so why not run it by a clock. They're all quite honestly genius ideas that I am in awe of. But when you come to these panels, well they're big, they're heavy, they're chunky and that means anything that needs to move them is also going to have to be big and heavy and chunky and that means expensive. Now it could be that something like this is the answer. This is a hypercycloid drive. It's able to take weight and it's not that expensive. Cycloid drives are a speed reducer and they're used a lot in robotics. They're infamous because they reduce the speed by ridiculous gear ratios. They have very low backlash so they're accurate and they're able to lift extremely heavy weights in relation to their size because of the high torque you get out of them. Even when 3D printed, the input shaft drives an eccentric bearing that in turn drives a cycloid disc. The disc moves in a centric cycloidal motion and the perimeter of this disc is geared to a stationary ring gear and has a series of output shafts or rollers placed at the face of the disc. The output shafts directly drive the output shaft as the cycloidic disc rotates. It's very similar to planetary gearing. Now surprisingly enough the STL files for this were really easy to find so I haven't given it a go at designing my own I just got this one from Ot Vinta and it's available in Thingiverse and I downloaded it to um, Tinkercad as an STL file so that I could play around with it. Later on I guess I'll be having a look at how to design them myself but right now I just grabbed what was available. The gear ratio is the the ratio of the number of pins right here to the number of lobes on the ring and that little bump is a lobe so there are 12 pins 11 lobes and it is pins minus lobes which is 1 divided by lobes so it's 1 over 11 or if you like an 11 to 1 gear ratio which is pretty impressive when you think about it although I did come across some crazy crazy gear ratios I figured this would be good enough now to put this together you've got to pop that lobe in for, uh, that ring in first and the shaft needs its couple of eccentrics putting it 90 degrees to each other shaft goes in there and then you line up the eccentric so that it will turn that one now it will work with just one ring in but it will wobble a little bit because of the uneven distribution of weight so it comes with another ring and the other ring fits right on there now it is a little awkward if they're not lined up so if you line it up first and then take this which is the output plate and pop it on there it won't fit into the other one beneath so what you do is take this and give it a little rotation there we go until it fits and try it again and keep doing that until the output slides right in there when you've done that there's a tiny retaining clip that goes into the notch on the end of the input shaft 
There we go. And there's a little handle that we can put on for now. This where the handle is the input. This flat plate is the output. And you can drive it either way. It'll either go that way or it'll go that way. But you can't drive this to drive that. It, will, it won't turn. So you can only drive that drive shaft and it can be driven backwards or forwards. So I have a bunch of these lying around and I've been meaning to put them up for quite a while but I wanted solar tracking with them. Now the ones that we've looked at, Nighthawk in Lights and the Amazingly Simple Solar Tracker I thought were awesome but I thought that the motor, the mechanics, was a bit pants really. Uh, it had quite a bit of backlash and you found it had hunting behaviour on the videos and I didn't like it. I wanted something stronger that I could make myself which is why I came across this cycloid drive and even 3D printed like this, this cycloid drive I think is going to be the perfect answer. It's going to be able to position this because a motor will go on the drive shaft, the hinge for this thing will go here on the drive plate and we can use that sensing system to be able to position this. So the cycloid drive is going to be the heart of the mechanism that I'm going to need to do solar tracking. Anyway I thought I'd go through the drive with you. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.